guess what? It is Preakness Week starting next week, and we are just going to wrap up this weekend of racing here on Sunday. And I've got Dave Rodman with me today. Dave, you and I are just going to be we're, – we're the lone talent of the day today because <laughs> you're right. going to be running the show in the afternoon up there in the announcer's booth, and we're happy to have you here this morning on Today at the Races. Yeah, and all you, I can tell you is – Breathe, because <laughs> this week is going to be very, very busy. And of course, starting with a post draw on Monday, we have sunrise tours here starting uh, on Tuesday morning from 6 to 9. We get a chance to look at the Preakness horses and uh, the stakes horses and the morning training and a lot of special treats. Alibi breakfast coming up Absolutely. this week on Thursday. And then, of course, Black Eyed Susan Day on Friday and Preakness Day on Saturday. So uh, the weather looks like it's going to hold up pretty nicely through the week. Knock so on wood. Yep. Knock mm -hmm. on wood. So hopefully we get to see a little bit of that. Let's see what's going on with the track earlier this morning and today right now. As noted, we are off the turf today and the good track is labeled as good, but Dave and I were just discussing maybe by perhaps by race three, that could potentially be quickening up to fast. As you can see, sealed on the outside, harrowed on the inside, so there's a little mm. bit of moisture still involved in the in the composition of the track. Yeah, even today. on the harrowed part of the track about 20 minutes ago, it looked like there's just a little bit of moisture in there. We've got plenty of sunshine, nice temperatures, a little bit of breeze should dry it out after we had all kinds of track conditions yesterday with the rain moving through and it forced us off the turf yesterday and we're off the turf again today including the opener to start the pick five and it's uh, this opener again does start the pick five as you mentioned in this claiming twenty five thousand for the three-year-olds which have never won two originally scheduled nine furlongs on the turf now for nine furlongs on the dirt scratch in the three four five six seven eight twelve thirteen fourteen you and i both land on the number 11 helmet for anthony farrier gets jamie rodriguez here today coming first in the barn for anthony farrier nice effort in that last time out was just dq for seventh but was a win physical winning ride at that claiming now more than two in the one turn mile at laurel park he has the numbers he has the talent he's not really a speed type horse but uh, his figures on the dirt almost tower over the field and it's first time Anthony Farrier. First claim dirt routes Anthony Farrier, 26% in the last 14 days and a positive ROI. In the last 14 days, Farrier's barn 11 for 44 at a 25% clip. So some deadly numbers there off the claim for Farrier. And hopefully, even if he doesn't get a super quick pace up front, I think he could be the superior animal here. And number nine, God is love. And it's an interesting claim and a raise, adding the blinkers. Mm -hmm. Big, good-looking gray horse, first time in the Gina Perry barn. This horse had some speed on the way back on the turf. It's been kind of dull the last few starts, but maybe the fresh and the blinkers can do him some good. The two in here is Lightning Lad. He's only had one start here at Pimlico, race taken off the turf, and that was a muddy track. So, and also he was unruly in the starting gate. So maybe just yep. one more little shot in here for Lightning Lad to hit the board, and I threw the one in there, Spiritual Ghost, for no other reason than I needed a fourth horse. <laughs> uh, I threw in the fact that we've got Alberto Delgado on this one, and Alberto Delgado is going to be giving this one a good ride, especially being on uh, at Laurel Park. Uh, also, you want to refer back to that maiden breaking score at this distance and had an inside post. So the race technically sets up well tactics wise for spiritual ghosts. And I think with this uh, really shot downfield today, it might help him out there today. But race number two kicks off the early pick four and it kicks off in this claiming 40,000 for the three year olds and upwards, which have never won three going six furlongs on the dirt scratch in the number two, Captain Candy. Dave, you have the number five on top and most Cephas. This is yeah. in the barn of Michael Trombetta gets Victor Carrasco today. Yeah, we have some video in this race. So since it's your top pick and I'm picking second, could have picked him on top. Uh, maybe we'll roll that video a cryo from March 19th, his last start here at Laurel Park. Claimed out of this race for 40. He's in for 40 today with a very hot Lynn Cash barn. He was second in this race behind Classier, Classier. Uh, came back to win his next start and one of the next two, uh, including the Henry Clark at Laurel. Mile 87 buyer figure, a 92 number as well. So he did run behind a very quick and improving horse there from the Kira McGee barn. Uh, it was uh, classier that day, I believe, it was uh, Brittany Russell. So uh, Cryo looks like the horse to beat. The barn's hot, but I went with a little bit of a <laughs> price here. Uh, and that's number five, Mosifus. And it, uh, what a race he ran June 11th at Laurel as a first-time gelding. Great speed. 
wire to wire. Off of that big win and a good number, he was really the, one of the choices. He got lots of respect as the second choice up at Belmont back on July 3rd of last year to the favorite Luna Sima, who's since won a couple of races with a couple of nice upper 80 uh, buyer numbers. He's very quick, Mosifus, and uh, it, and if he runs that race back from June of last year, the layoff is a question, but he's got a couple of, well, more than a couple, three, five furlong workouts from the gate and a breezing over Crosstown at Laurel Park. I think he's going to be great value today, Mosifus. There we go. Mosifus morning line six to one there in race number two to kick off the early pick four. Race number three, second leg of the early pick four, and starting the rainbow pick six. Let's go ahead and take a look at my ticket. Of course, we have that carryover of five, 5,170, and that will start in race number three. Let's take a look at what I've got going on in my ticket. Two deep here in race number three, four, excuse me, three deep in race number four. I'm going to go and talk quickly and touch on my single in the number, in the sixth race, which also starts the jackpot super high five. But in that allowance, optional 62.5, I take a chance on Sister Cloudy, second time starter for Brittany Russell one first out Sheldon Russell on top so we got that we have the big jump uh, but a couple of things I'm attracted by with this one of course uh, collected 11% with the second time starters but we'll dig into that in a little bit but I go set excuse me five wide in race number seven I think that race could go a couple of different ways especially being five furlongs on the dirt I think that's a big change up here today from any type of distance that we've got going on. And then I go three deep in race number eight for a $36 ticket to keep things short, sweet, and to the point for the start of this rainbow pick six, which does kick off with this maiden claiming 45, excuse me, six furlongs on the dirt for the straight three-year-old fillies. You have the number three on top, Nami for Rudy Sanchez. Solomon gets the blinkers on and also gets Angel Cruz on, but you have a nice stat that you dug up, Dave. Yeah, Nami, first time blinkers uh, for Rudy Solomon. Let's take a look at it. First time blinkers on the dirt in the past three years, four for 24, 17% when adding those blinkers, a positive ROI of $2.77 sense and if you go back even five years five for 29 still 17 percent even better positive roi at three dollars and 22 cents so he's uh adept at, at the claim and then finding out exactly what to do maybe to get a little bit more out of their claims and maybe the blinkers will do the trick today the stats say probably he's done it with unrequited love a horse in a long time ago no more mask and most recently mm -hmm. misty mauve yes as well just a few examples there this is a filly that caught my first time out when she finished fifth behind Ellie Victorino with a belated run you see in the comment and in her last start and stretching to the mile on the fast track of the first time and her second out uh, she rallied mildly and then kind of galloped out okay in that race as well so maybe the blinkers could a little more tactical speed in her there that I could see the two chorus choice right first off the claim for Joanne Shankel Beaten favorite at four to five, but Callie, I think she had an excuse that day. Mm -hmm. That was April 30th. There was a period of time at Laurel we had no workers. Maybe she was a little bit short on Agreed. conditioning there, and uh, she ran like it, right? Looked mm -hmm. like she was a winner at the eighth pole, and here they come. Here they come, and that's exactly what I went off of as well. She was also on the wet dirt last time out. She's not particularly bred strongly to handle that wet dirt. I think she was going to run regardless, well regardless. But then we get Jamie Rodriguez. Jamie Rodriguez is going to be able to get this one out of the gates fairly quickly. You also have Joanne Shankle, who is three for eight with a new horse in the barn debut. So you wrap up your picks with the three four and two six let's talk about let's touch really quickly on lady ensign for mike trombetta gets victor carrasco here today we have a couple of these bullet works so you look at the bullet works and those are three furlongs that doesn't interest me so much but it's the work on may 2nd bullet work going five furlongs 102 respectable enough and then that gate work uh, to proceed all of those bullet works coming into this first race yeah the work certainly attract your eye there she's a half sister to assemblyman who didn't win first out, but I believe won second out. So a win early family there. And midshipman, who's 13%, a little above average, with first-time starter runners in the winner's circle. Lady Ensign, a couple of good points. Will she be fit ready? Is she quick enough to handle this group in her debut against that uh, upper-level maiden claiming actually not in for the tag here, right, for the Maryland bread? Correct. Hmm? Correct. We'll find out in race number three that kicks off that rainbow pick six. Race 
Race number four is an allowance optional 62.5, going a mile and 16th on the dirt as intended for the straight three-year-old scratch. And the number three, Pride of Peyton Dave. You have the number seven on top. It's Viper. This one is in the barn for Brittany Russell gets Sheldon Russell. Let's go ahead and take a look at that effort back on March 11th. Yeah, do I need to see this again? I loved her this day <laughs> at 10 to 1. And uh, she almost got up, but eldest son had a great, great trip down inside. Uh, no easy days uh, also in this race. So here you see a Colt on March 11th run against a couple of the rivals that he'll be facing this afternoon. But all said and done, a, a good effort from its Viper to finish second. Uh, beaten a uh, neck behind eldest son there in the red cap got through with easy trip inside here's its viper on the outside so if he doesn't win today uh, he's going to get more money from me when he runs on the turf. This horse is bred <laughs> to love the turf. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll so I, I've always thought he had a lot of talent. You know, he just settles and makes one little kick. Uh, turf or dirt, I think he's a kind of a good play maybe to beat uh, – uh, the entry here, Eldest Son. They're neither Eldest Son time to cruise entry, nor it's Viper are going to be a huge price, but right. say, I, I think you got to respect that entry. Eldest Son getting through with an easy trip, and you got time to cruise. Also comprising part of that entry it was eighth in the Federico Tassio stakes there, the same race in which Eldest Son exits. I like that race behind 90% uh, Bryn, obviously, second, mm -hmm. three back at Parks, where he dug in for second. And really wanted to grab the second spot and did, though 90% Bryn ran away from the 90% Bryn just just uh, nip uh, there uh, in a subsequent start. So by perform in the Tessio. So uh, the entry strong, but I'm going to go about one more time to It's Viper. There we go. It's Viper there in race number four uh, to kick off. It's a, excuse me, second leg of that rainbow pick six. Race number five is a maiden special weight. Originally a mile and 16th on the dirt, on the turf. Now taken off the turf, of course, a mile and 16th on the dirt for the girls. Three, four, and five-year-old scratching the one, four, five, six, 10, 13, 14, 15, and 16 in this maiden special weight. You and I both land on high stick here in this race for Shug McGahee, Fergal Lynch, uh, just ran on the turf twice. Very impressive on the turf uh, in that, especially in that last effort, just missing out on that maiden special weight at Indiana. Was entered at Kentucky Downs in late September, was entered on the 21st of April at Laurel, uh, but opts to come today and opts to stay on the dirt. Yeah, and, and Shug good with this uh, layoff type filly. And it's Preakness week coming up, and why not pick a horse by Nyquist out right. of a red bullet mare, right? right? Nyquist third of the Preakness said red bullet, of course, Bailey of the bullet. So you got top and bottom Preakness yes. week coming there. <laughs> this is the first time we agree today. I mean, I think she would have been almost a must play on the on the turf, but he, he decides not to scratch her, keep her on the dirt here, that's right? That's what intrigues so me. That's okay. And uh, Shug's 20% with this kind of layoff on the dirt uh, on turf his numbers were super strong that was going to be my stat of the day on a layoff but it is on the grass so we'll see what she can do now she doesn't uh fire at all on the dirt uh, a filly that i've been following on the dirt since debut back in the sprint in January at Laurel, and it's been off since March. A trombetta filly by Malibu Moon, solving progress. She was mm -hmm. willing throughout, th willing throughout, with a belated rally in her debut run, and a good closing third with some interest too back in March. So she's fresh and she's ready. I think this distance, a mile and a sixteenth, is going to be perfect for her. She's got some talent. Don't know whether it's going to be today or not off the layoff. But I'm keeping her on that stable mail. The Elkstone Group going to sure. get me one way or the other with its Viper. <laughs> Or solving progress, there both Elstone runners. And then I also I take a stab at Nana's Tier Masu for Brittany mm -hmm. Russell. Now inherits the rail and gets the blinkers on with Sheldon Russell on top. They both, Sheldon Russell having two wins yesterday uh, with Brittany Russell, I believe, as well. You also, had, this is one coming up first off the layoff. This one was in the barn with, with Todd. Started out going long on the turf. And for me, that's just an uptick right away of what their expectations were about the horse from the get-go because he usually doesn't go that direction with first-time starters in particular. So they've done the work. They've put in the time. This is this is a typical Rapoli move. If they don't cut it at Pletcher's on that championship meet circuit, they try with Brittany. But then Brittany's had plenty of time with this one. 
She's had this one since the begin, at least since the beginning of April. So it was an MTO scratch over at Laurel on the turf as a maiden special weight. But uh, I, this is another move by an owner and trainer combo that it deems quite successful. On paper, you would think this filly may not have early speed, right? No menace, no menace in two I starts. I don't buy that. But blinkers go on today, yes. right? And that's interesting to me. And her damn Nola Mia, uh, she was all speed. She was yes. a, a very quick horse. So the family says, yeah, you, this filly must have some speed somewhere. Maybe the blinkers on will bring it out today. And this is not the first time this has happened where something out of Pletcher's barn has not had been the quickest out of the gate. And then Brittany gets these horses getting particular, getting pretty forward out of the gate right from the get-go. So that's, a, that's just a trend that I've noticed and that I've seen happening. So I'm going to go ahead and ride on that bandwagon yeah, as well. Speaking of blinkers on, it's second time blinker for Zippy Doodah Day. There we go. Uh, kind of like like my uh, you know wild long shot. Yep. And maybe with the, she, she lost pretty much all chance at the start with the blinkers on the turf. Now it's first time blinkers on the dirt. So will be a huge price in here, no doubt. I'm going to use her maybe on the bottom at least in a couple of uh, exactos. And there we have it. Dave Rodman, 11, 12, 2, 3 there in that maiden special way cut down. And we'll be right back after this commercial to touch on the rest of the races here in the last day leading up to Freakness Week. discussing the other races that we have for the rest of the card here on Sunday. It includes race number six that starts off that jackpot super high five. We have a slight carryover, 2,106, and we are gearing up for a big weekend for this for this pool to uh, potentially get really big, Dave. Yeah, right. Uh, the, the, the jackpot high five, you have to have all five there yes. and be the single ticket. So it will be a payout, you know, if you have the five, but if you're – Single ticket, you get the whole shebang, it's, it's right? It, shebang. it grows pretty quickly, um, for sure. And if they don't hit it on Preakness Day, you know, it'll be huge for the following day, right? Abs absolutely. Or Black Eyed we, Susan Day, even. Hmm? We got this pool going when it, it first started. We That pool grew to about 35K. So if nothing hits today, keep your eye on this pool leading up into Preakness Weekend. It's gonna, it, uh, Otherwise, it's going to blow up big, I think. But let's get back down to business here. In that particular race that does start that jackpot super high five in this up. Uh, Allowance optional claiming 62.5, going a mile and 16th on the dirt as intended for the straight three-year-old Phillies. Ke uh, excuse me, I almost said Keith. Dave, <laughs> you have the number six on top. Six the hard way for Rudy Sanchez, Salmon, Angel Cruz. Let's go ahead and take a look at that effort from a six the hard way. Okay, this is a route race, mile and a 16th. Her, her game had kind of been one run sprinting, making a run. So maybe they decided, let's try to take her back in this race. And when they did, she got a little bit rank early in the race in the uh, back of the pack. We'll see that here in in, in just a second. I'm going to toss him the head kind of in the air a little bit there. In the back there, the red cap horses last a uh, little subtle. Uh, know how she did a few times, and uh, I, I think she, maybe they'll get a little more aggressive today and try to get her a little bit more toward the, the, right the, the front end. There you go. Okay. Um, and so she was a little bit resistant to that taking back. Um, Eager beaver. But, but uh, during the stretch, you'll see that th that didn't really hurt her. And here she is coming widest of them all. And actually a decent closing kick, beaten only a couple of lengths by Cats in the Timber and Crypto uh, Mama. Uh, Cats in the Timber, Crypto Mama, uh, recent third to, to Balpool uh, at Aqueduct. May see that horse in the Black Eyed Susan Stakes. So you see she's pretty willing. And imagine if she didn't have that. Rankness did the first turn run, maybe right. even a little closer. She could have made a maybe perhaps a three horse photo there in the uh, in the Weber City Miss. So I'm gonna give her one more chance here with Rudy sure. and a sprint to route strong stat as well. Absolutely. As as of lately, seventeen percent, twelve for sixty nine when stretching them out, as Dave Rodman mentioned. You also have the number five to the inside. Cover the spread for Brittany Russell, Javian Toledo. I notch with this one on top here for this one today. Returns after a little bit of time off. Just a little bit of spacing in between races maybe gets a little bit of a freshener. 
Yeah, uh, she's the filly to beat for sure, but I just went a little bit better price. Absolutely, there. absolutely. Mm -hmm. There, you also have the number four Tinseltown Tina for Betty Feliciano ah. Jr. gets the blinkers on. How much do you think of a changeup this is going to be today for her? Don't know. Don't okay. know if she's fast enough to win, but I do know the race two back at Laurel. Astute rail watchers mm -hmm. uh, and bias watchers will note on March 25th at Laurel, this filly was not on the best part of the track. There have been horses, uh, several horses up that day who were down inside. They came back to win next start, and I know she didn't fire against happy clouds, but now they're trying the blinkers and the stretch out as well. I have a feeling she'll be near the front end today. And a work since that race, five ace work over at Laurel. You know, good maintenance work, a minute and three fifths. Don't want to see her bullet away. I don't want right. to see her be a runaway in here, but maybe the blinkers, it looks like, you know, she's got a little bit of talent. We'll see if it's against this group. We'll find out in race number six in that jackpot super high five as Dave Ronman goes six five four three. Race number seven is an allowance for the girls, three years old and up, going five furlongs on the dirt as this was intended to be five furlongs on the turf scratch in the one, two, five, eight, and twelve. You have the number seven winked on top for Ed Merriman gets JD Acosta. This filly likes to certainly pack a punch, and we'll see if she can pack it in for 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm taking a bit of a shot. Uh, I like Tam Char as well, but uh, she's been off since December. First after the 60 to 180 day layoff for Edwin Merriman. Very strong stat. Not a big sample, 13 starters, but three winners, 23%, yep. and a positive ROI as well. Um, this filly just ran, I think, the race of her life, obviously, best number of her life, going five and a half on a sloppy track. Well, the track's drying out today, likely fast, obviously, by the seventh race. But the fact that she's fresh and shown a bit of ability to sit off of any speed, I think, uh, what a well in this abbreviated sprint going five eighths of a mile, right? It's not five and a half, five eighths of a mile right. on on the main track. So user on top today. The three horse in here, Tam Char, mm -hmm. is first off the claim in the Michael Ngorham barn. Very consistent filly. Likes to try. She's down inside there. And break from actual post one. Closest to the rail with Chrome Haley Hard and Carolina Sun, the one and two out of the race. And there we have it, Dave Rodman, 7349 there in race number seven. A pretty packed, punchy type of field, I think, in that race. But race number eight, to wrap up this weekend of racing, is a claiming 10,000 going six furlongs on the dirt for the girls, three years old and up. Scratch in the number five. She's so spicy. You have the rail horse on top. Pray for the USA. Charlie Frock coming right out of the stall here at Pimlico gets J. Ron Barbosa in the saddle for the first time. Yeah, I think she's back at a winning level here for $10,000. Uh, Barbosa gets aboard. That's a positive sign. Lewis Rivera at a double call. He went to extra crunchy. No, yes. I'm sorry. Extra crunchy is um, uh, Axel Concepcion. Uh, Lewis Rivera went to um, O'Shaughnessy, right? Yes. So it had, uh, had three calls in the race. We'll talk about her in a minute. But I like Pray for the USA today. I Last out, sloppy track. They try to take her back a little bit. Did not work. Swung wide in the stretch with some late interest. Maybe a little bit of a tougher feel, right? And in for 10 today. Back at a winning level. I think they're going to try to go for it today and sit on the lead or right off with speed in here with this abbreviated field, leaving six with five. She's so spicy. Uh, scratch to end that race. Simply a winning level and finish with interest last time out. Six in here is O'Shaughnessy, and that was Rivera's choice of three calls in the race. She's been very consistent on the pace as well, and a good solid third behind Cocktail Dreaming. Three back who came back to win her next start. Hot looking Royal is kind of intriguing out of a double key race, but she's been off since January for Annette. Eubanks. If things go a little crazy up front, she could rally from off of it as she did at Laurel back last year as a three-year-old. Again, two winners out of that race, the hot-looking Royal race uh, in her last start a few months ago. And there we have it. Dave Rodman goes one six two four there in race number eight. And this is our last day of racing pre Preakness weekend. And let's head on over to Lightning Round for a touch-up on what's to come. But first, we're not quite done with today's race day. Let's go over your value play again today. Race number two, the numbers five, Mosifus, Dave, as your price play value play of the day. Mm. Yeah, that big race from Mosifus two back was when he was a first-time gelding, kind of disappointed in New York, fresh and since, but got a lot of play against, I think, a really good horse in that race, and I think he'll come out firing today. 
And then let's talk about your best bet of the day. Race number three, we have a stat also on the number three in it, NAMI. Yeah, that was our stat of the day with the blinkers on in case you missed it. First time blinkers the last five years for Rudy Salomon, five for 29, 17%. Last three years, same 17% positive ROI on both a three and five year angle. And he's tried it, he's done it before with unrequited love, no more mask, misty mauve, just to name three of those uh, four or five winners he's had. There we go. All right, enough of racing here, talking about racing here today. Let's talk about what's to come next week. And of course, we had our top hitter, Mage, winner of the Kentucky Derby. Ship in yesterday. We clearly are looking at some footage of that forever. The professional, calm, cool, and collected coming here to Old Hilltop, Dave. Welcome to Baltimore, Mage. Yeah, it looks really good there. And uh, got up the, off the van, took a few tours around the stakes barn to find his new home. I guess he'll be in the first stall, right? I guess yeah. so. Uh -huh. So he'll be out tomorrow morning, and we have some. Yeah. Uh, we have Claudia Spadaro, and we have Samantha Perry. They will be attending training tomorrow morning. Hey, of course, yeah. uh, hey. we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some footage of him training tomorrow that we're gonna have updated for you guys. So feel free to go to Maryland Racing YouTube for all of these updates that we're gonna be having on these Preakness runners leading up into Preakness 148. And of course, if you're not gonna be, if you, you should be looking at the YouTube videos, but you can also come in for. The those sunrise tours we put on a wonderful right. show that starts Tuesday but we have we will have the goods for you on Monday of Mage and National mm -hmm. Treasure who y will be yeah. training over here tomorrow you'll get a peek of Mage on a sunrise tour at the stakes barn if you're really lucky you'll be on the apron at the right time yep. when he's uh, testing out the Pimlico track so definitely worth it you'll see a lot of Preakness runners starters personalities jockeys trainers and more it's the, the whole circus, the whole, not circus, mm -hmm. but the whole show is going to be here starting tomorrow morning, and we will have all of that info for you and all the fun clips for you on Maryland Racing YouTube, of course. Now let's dig into some noms. Let's talk about what's going on. We co we're covering the boys on the dirt for this last day of covering up nom in the Chick Lang Stakes here, going six furlongs on the dirt. Dave, taking a look at these noms, any particular, mm -hmm. anything jumping out at you? Well, I know Baffert 7 has sending having a meltdown so right away there we know go. he's he's very fast right he's going to be uh tough to beat in there and uh i think keith's horse is big special he pronounced the chick lang winner a few weeks ago i think it's that's him the r the ribbit okay ribbit. okay we also have uh super chow multiple mm -hmm. graded stakes winner uh excuse me, ultimate grade stakes play son of Lord Nelson, trained by Georgie Delgado, who saddled Lightning Larry for a victory in last year's Chick Lang. Super, Super Chow has won six of eight career starts, including the Hutchinson at Gulfstream Park last time out. Now let's touch on our next nom that we do have coming up. And the Sir Barton stakes. They, uh, Dave, anything mm -hmm. popping out at you? Because uh, this one's pretty, uh, this one could is uh, interestingly packed. Caliostro. <laughs> there we Caliostro. go. Caliostro. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I've been following that horse since fairgrounds and kind of always liked him. I don't know uh, if we have any real bears in here that are, you know, well, Arabian Lion. Is, I know Baffert's going to send him, right? He was, uh, I believe so. He dueled right we'll down see. to the to the line with uh, first mission. Yes. So, yeah, he's going to the Sir Barton. So he'll be the speed, obviously, or at least one of the speeds. But I just kind of like the way Caliostro's coming around at fairgrounds this year. He's had a couple of maybe semi-troubled trips, hidden trouble in there. And, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be rooting for him a bit. There we go. Yep. There we have it. There, Dave's, Dave's eyebrow raisers and the Sir Barton. And, of course, let's talk about the Pimlico Special. Immediately what comes to mind in the Pimlico Special Mm. is, of course, a doppelganger, winner of the Carter uh, from up at Aqueduct and coming down here. And, of course, uh, hometown, home, hometown cheering on. Right. Now, um, uh, th there's going to be big feels, I've been told already. Perfect. Right? On Friday, especially right Friday, Pimlico Special and Black Eyed Susan. Yep. Um, Nimitz Class. How there, good is he, right? There we go. Is he? How good is he? We're going to find out. Triple digit numbers from this guy over across town at Laurel, doing it easy. Horse I thought was a one-run one sprinter. Show you how wrong I can be, right? Exactly. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Yeah, so. Let's take a look. And then uh, I don't know if we have any kind of boards for it, but we have touched uh, We're going to touch on quickly, of course, the Maryland Sprint Stakes as well. Um, I always I always take a look at what's going on here. Of course, I look at uh, plenty of home, ta plenty of local talent uh, shipping, uh, 
nominated in for that. But anything uh, stretching out at you, Dave? Of course, wonder where Craig is. That's interesting. Mm, yeah, we'll see a uh, veteran uh, and, and one of the veterans there in the field. I haven't looked really too too closely at that race, but uh, you know, and it's looked with, with those nominations. It could be a uh, pretty quick pace up front, and, uh, or you know, I, I, we'll see if if if. Uh, if one of our Craigers can come back and roll back to great form. It'd be fun to see. He ran He ran very, very hard in his 2023 debuts, uh, as, uh, Brittany, as Brittany said, I don't uh, know. just I after he finished. I don't know if they're going to run this horse on the mark in there, but I believe he won. That's a Rudy Solomon horse, isn't it, right? Yes. And uh, he, he yes. won at Penn National like a good thing the other night. He's run here in Maryland before. Um, yeah, that's a good lineup. Yeah, there we have it. And uh, let's also touch on if we do have anything up. Just touching on the Preakness, of course, we have Mage, National Treasure coming in. Uh, excuse me, our Frederico Tessio runner, I think, is a potential as well, which is something I'm potentially excited about. But any any top feelings about Preakness so far for you, Dave? Well, I mean, Mage is going to, I think, have to prove, right, that uh, yes. that he may be able to rally off the pace against a more moderate pace this time. But, you know, he's had speed before. Yes. Right? Yes. So he's, he's a horse that can be near the lead or come from off the lead. But uh, very intrigued by uh, first mission coming in for mm -hmm. Brad Cox. And uh, the way Blazing Sevens worked uh, just yesterday, I believe yes. it was, um, for Chad Brown, uh, would think that I'm going to lean uh, towards using those horses. Yep. Absolutely. There we have it. Dave Rodman's uh, Dave, Dave Rodman's first glance, first kind of draft at Preakness 148. And I'm going to get offset and we're going to take it back to Dave Rodman for some more changes and uh, scratches. Thank you. And we will see you next week for the beginning of the week of Preakness 148.